So while I may not be a huge fan of horror games, that doesn't mean that I don't dabble in the genre every now and then. And after perusing Capcom's 30th anniversary character encyclopedia, Jesus that's a mouthful, I came across an interesting little gem called Haunting Ground for the PlayStation 2. This is a bit of a strange one for me because at first glance this game doesn't look like much. It looked like your typical survival horror game with cliches very reminiscent of old school Resident Evil. But after thinking about it for a second, that's exactly what drew me to it. What made the old school Resident Evil games work was that the player was almost always in a constant state of uncertainty. You were exploring this location that you had almost no idea about, you had to be very careful with your provisions and supplies so as not to waste them, and almost every enemy in the game is an absolute threat, and there were a lot of them. Haunting Ground is a very similar situation, except instead of elite soldiers talking about sandwiches, you're playing as an innocent college girl, instead of mutants and zombies, you're fighting against crazed psychopaths, and instead of medicines and guns, you're utilizing alchemical concoctions and a dog. But before we get into the meat of it, what's the premise? Fiona Belly is a simple college student who, while visiting her parents, gets involved in a car crash that kills both said parents. Afterwards, she finds herself in a castle dungeon with no clothes, no parents, and absolutely no idea what's going on. After some initial exploration, Fiona runs into some of the castle's inhabitants and gets a small idea about what's going on. Apparently, she inherited some strange power called Azoth from her father, which is the very reason why the main antagonist Ricardo is after her, and later on Lorenzo. She later on finds and befriends a white shepherd named Huey, and finding comfort in a newfound canine friend, the two must explore the castle to unravel this dark mystery, and escape with both their bodies and minds intact. What works in this game's favor, in my opinion, is the careful blend of gameplay mechanics that mix together to make a rather unique horror setting. The fixed camera, the powerful yet also identifiable enemies, an atmosphere that really makes your skin crawl, and of course, utilizing your new canine compatriot. Fiona herself isn't really used to dangerous situations, but that's exactly the point. This game's not really about fighting, it's more about exploring the castle, solving puzzles, and finding secrets. But despite Fiona's inability to defend herself, she isn't defenseless. The game utilizes a stealth mechanic in which you can find hiding places around the castle to give your enemies a slip, and the game has alchemy labs spread throughout the castle that you can find in order to create artifacts that grant you special powers and skills to help you on your journey. And then there's good old Huey. <laughs> Let me just say this much right now, Huey is arguably one of the greatest dogs in video game history, and I've dealt with the likes of Rapid. Huey is really your only source of comfort in this wretched darkness, but he's also one of the most important mechanics in the entire game. At your command, Huey can sniff around and search for hidden objects and passageways, he can help you with certain puzzles and alert you to incoming threats, and despite Fiona having a pretty pathetic little kick, Huey is your main asset for dealing with enemies. That means it's doubly important that you make sure Huey stays in line because his behavior also depends on how you treat him, whether you scold him when he doesn't do what he's supposed to, or praise him whenever he does his job. This makes Huey one of the more intricate but also one of the coolest mechanics I've seen in a while, giving Haunting Ground that little niche that it needs to stand out from the crowd. That being said, of course, this game isn't without its issues, and the first issue I see is in the story. For how simple it is, it leaves a lot of unanswered questions. I played through this game twice to get all the endings, and believe me, it's not as rewarding as it sounds, and I still had to peruse the wiki in order to understand the full picture. Like, where and what is this castle? Why are there so many twisted things going on inside it, and what the heck is an Azoth? It's a real shame too, because the strength of the narrative really comes from the cast. These characters are actually very interesting, particularly the simple-minded monstrosity Deli Vitas, the crazed maid Daniela, and Ricardo, who becomes really interesting once you find out his sick and twisted endgame. And then there's a second issue, and this is gonna sound strange coming from me. This game's not that scary. Unnerving? Certainly. Disturbing? Definitely but not really scary. I mean, I realize that scary may not be the mood that this game is going for. It's not trying to knock you out of your socks or make you scream for mommy. It's trying to send a chill up your spine. But even on that note, I expected a little more out of a game like this. But hey, maybe that's exactly the reason why I got a lot out of this game. I was intrigued, I was unnerved, and yeah, I'll admit it, I had a lot of fun with this game. Of course, finding a copy of this game is rather difficult, so it's really up to you on whether it's worth your time to give this game a try. 
I don't think I'd be disappointed to miss out on a game like this, but at the same time, I am glad I gave it a shot.